Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde J.K.L. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand in watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. And here we are once again. It is Monday, the 9th, and this is Clyde. You are listening to the Artist Friends Podcast. This is ep- episode 37. And with this episode, as promised, if you were reading our uh, talkartpodcast.com site, we have a guest artist here, Sandra Alexis Heath. And first of all, let me say hello to Diane and hello to Constance. They are both here. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hi, Sandra. Hello. <laughs> hello, Sandra. Uh, hi. Thank you for having me on. You're welcome. Um, to get things started a little bit here, um, tell us just briefly about you. Uh, uh, how did you get started in art and uh, what kind of art do you do? Yeah. So my first real uh, entry to art was in writing and, and theater. You know, I grew up in an, in, our, in an artistic household. My mother was a writer and an artist. She never thought of herself as that. But, you know, I grew up listening to show music. My mom was the first one that, you know, took us to the museums. And uh, my plan was really to go into theater. And I came to New York to study theater and, um, went on a couple auditions and didn't get those auditions and found myself really working in public relations and marketing. And my, my, uh, my introduction to art in terms of me practicing art has really been recent since 2017. I started doing um, mixed media art journal pieces and really, um, uh, really more as a way to relax and and, and de-stress and express my creativity after a health scare. But prior to that, um, my husband is an artist and my husband started painting uh, when he, he, was, he, was, uh, he was over 40. And his whole journey is how we ended up uh, opening a gallery and some of the experiences that he had and um, you know, my, my, uh, an experience that I had in the, in the eighth grade of all things, when I, in the, in the sixth grade, I think, of all things, when I was uh, looking to share a poem with my class and they, you know, broke out into laughter and I was humiliated. It, it gave me a whole, um, a special heart for, um, artists being able to share their work and being able to be well received. Okay. You said in 2017 you started creating. Is that when you decided to pursue it as a profession or you just started creating 
creating art? In in 2017 is when I actually began creating, and I would say and I would say that I um, I'm in what I call uh, still the ugly art period, <laughs> and um, and you know I think it's important to call that to call it that because in calling it that that frees me to play and experiment and try different things and I am uh, less hung up on. Um, it's got to look this way and it's got to look that way. Because now that I think about it, uh, 2017 actually wasn't my first foray. Um, I started playing with art earlier and I don't remember the date, but, but everything was just, um, I was so intentional on things looking a certain way immediately. And when they did not, I, you know, was frustrated and thought, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I, I, this is, I don't have it, you know. Um, but in 2017, I approached art much more from the perspective of um, uh, just releasing my creativity and, and, and it being about that and exploring and trying things and, um, and playing. And that's made all the difference in the world. Okay. Yeah. That, yeah. We, we've talked about that. Yeah. We've talked about that before. How, when you're first starting out, you're, there, there's so many different kinds of art and so many materials and you just want to explore it all. And, and like you said, play and, you know, just work your way through all that to see what it is that it works for you. And yeah. So what, what have you found? What materials are you using now then? Right now, I'm working with um, watercolor and um, and pastels and also gels, and I'm also doing a lot of collage and fabric, <laughs> and because mm -hmm. it's mixed media, just a little bit of everything. But what I was going to say is that um, I am, you know, a person who, when I approach something, I'm like all in. So, so it's, you know, I can go to the paint store and get. I mean, not even be thoughtful, but but say, okay, I think, you know, this and this and this and this and this and this, and that's what I was doing, and that's what I was doing initially, and then um, not having any idea of how things work together, but just really experimenting, but ex but expecting the experiment to come out looking like something <laughs> awesome. Yeah, we all want masterpieces right off the bat. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome if that happened. <laughs> so you're a true artist because we all uh, you know, have to keep ourselves away from the art store because we say, well, I'm only going to get a paintbrush. And we walk out with several hundred dollars worth of <laughs> And then, crap, i got to pay rent. Oh, no, i got to eat. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. I started uh, collecting papers and then um, – uh, and then also, I've been going to the uh, for for collage. I can't stay away from uh, vintage and secondhand stores where I'm looking for books that I can, you know, find images from. And so my my family has once uh, again forbidden me to bring anything in. You know, <laughs> that's not, that's familiar too, right? <laughs> So uh, do you have a, a separate area where you can work, a, a studio space, or? You know what? Part of my office also um, serves as a studio space, and that's that's becoming um, problematic. <laughs> I I really have to keep the camera focused upward because otherwise it just looks <laughs> like uh, <laughs> a <Wow>. hurricane <laughs> here. Well, from all the. <laughs> That's mild. Yeah, it can look like it can look like that after a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I have a, a small apartment, which is my studio and where I live, and we just I just don't turn the camera around. I just <laughs> <laughs> I understand exactly. <laughs> nice for the video here. It looks really nice, but believe me. <laughs> Don't look, don't look that down. Is that Clyde always keeps it to about right here, doesn't she? Yeah. <laughs> because that, that kind of, you know, there's a whole lot of stuff underneath that radar that can be hidden. <laughs> Just, we won't talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're all there, though. That's the, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. Like, we all have that, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you're creative. You need to have all that stuff around you, and, and you have a mess, like, just in the process so you you know that's it's all part of it 
Yeah. yeah, it's funny that everybody's thinking that, oh, I'm the only one with this mess. <laughs> Everybody else is very neat and organized. I mean, even my desk right now, it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you think, but if most of the really neat and organized people aren't real productive either, you know, <laughs> so. You can't paint anything if your stuff's put up all the time. Yeah. What good yeah. is that? It's got to be out where you can use it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's what happens. You gotta be sitting yeah. up so they can yell at you when you're sitting there watching the video, you know, or something, and then all of a sudden the paintbrushes start talking to you. Come on, pick me up, pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 You got anything? Any questions you want to ask, Sandra? Or I, we we cut you off earlier. I didn't mean to do that. Uh, yeah. So what? How's your husband right. I've, I've into talking. this? What what kind of art does he do? My husband does um, what I would call. Um, abstract expressionism oh, that is that. really uh, centered in the, you know, in African diaspora experiences. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Work together or do you keep your no. art separated? Yeah, no, we, we keep things very um, separate. Uh, and I think um, right now I, I, I don't see where, there'd be any marriage you know <laughs> in, our, in, our, in our style <laughs> but um i can see at some point yeah i can see at some point but he well, works you, work, you um, work together though with the gallery area right yes like, we do yeah, yeah 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 but um he works on uh canvas and he also does artware and um he works on cardboard and um uh, wood, you know, a number of different things, and but in the future, but yes, we 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 you know we uh, work together in the gallery, and one of the events that we do once a month, we've been on hiatus since um, November, and we'll relaunch in April. Is hang night, and hang night is the event that we do. That's an open door, open showcase for artists. It's really. Uh, it's 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 um, one night. Artists really curate the evening themselves. We open the doors at six o'clock. From six to seven, artists bring their work, hang it wherever, and uh, then um, we open the doors to the public about seven thirty. So that allows about an hour uh, to you know get everything situated, and then we also invite. Um, um, other art forms to participate and we have an MC and uh, we make sure that throughout the night every artist has a chance to talk about their work and that's something that uh, I work on not only with my husband but with our daughters as well two of our daughters as well and the third one when she gets <clears throat> who lives in Baltimore when she can come up so where are they all artists you know, both of my um, both of my my two younger daughters are both actors, and uh, the middle daughter is creative, but she runs a printing company. Yeah. Okay. Where is now? Where is this gallery at? Where's this hang that? What's the date? Right. Yeah. So um, we're located in New York City in Harlem on 120th Street, and that's where Hang Night takes place, and it's usually the last Friday of every month. And, uh, you know, artists have to register um, so that we know, you know, who's coming. And what we also like to do is get their, get an get a image of the artwork so that we can promote it, you know, in advance and use it for um, uh, promotional efforts afterwards. But the whole idea is really um, to um, eliminate barriers that artists have to being able to show their work. We, we don't want any artists to say that they can't get in the gallery, that nobody will share their work. And so we, we take that away at least one night a month. That's great. That sounds like a lot of fun. <laughs> it's probably yeah, a lot of work does. too, but it sounds yeah, like a lot of fun. It, yeah. it does. It's taking all that down and hanging everything else up for a day and then moving it back. Yeah. It's, it's, it's got to be yeah. a chore. Yes. Yes. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How many artists do you usually have for for that? It varies. Uh, visual artists uh, range anywhere from twenty to thirty, and oh, so wow. 
we're looking to to um, do another event that's that's really uh, likely to be a smaller event because it's really really important uh, that every artist have a chance to talk, and that's for two reasons. We think it's important that artists get in the practice of really talking about their work, but it's also important for um, our particular community to engage in conversation around art and to understand that uh, an art gallery is a, can be a very comfortable place, that there are no, um, there are no uh, um, silly questions, that it's okay to ask questions about art, you know, that if you're, if you're looking at a piece of art and you have questions, it's, it's, there's not anything wrong with you, you know, and so um, being able to engage in that dialogue is important, and as we've grown, there's often just enough time for artists to introduce themselves, say one or two lines about the work, let us know where they can be found, but it still allows anybody um, to come up to them later in the evening and engage in conversation, which is really, really wonderful. And we also include, um, uh, you know, spoken word artists. Uh, we've had people come and dance. It's, you know, we, we never know who or what is going to show up and it makes it really, really wonderful. And then, the, and then the artists are also able to sell their work and there's no, we don't take any uh, commission for any work that's sold that evening. And so it's also a great time for art buyers to come in and get affordable art. Sounds like a really, really wonderful organization, a wonderful night. I think that's great. Yeah, yeah, it is. I live way down here. In uh, yeah, I wish more galleries were like that. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. It's it's true because a lot of people, you know, they're they're intimidated by going into a gallery, you know, like a fancy gallery. Yeah. They don't feel comfortable. They don't know what to say. They don't know, you know, they feel like yeah. out of place. So a lot yeah. of people don't even bother going in. Yeah. You're taking all that intimidation out. That's great. Yeah. I, I have a feeling that um, that uh, we, particularly in urban communities, that you'll probably begin to see, you know, more of this. I'm seeing people do um, art parties. And art a art party to me is a little different because it is a party. And we're not uh, looking to be a party. We really want to be focused on um, the conversation around the art. But I see a lot here in the city a lot of uh, art parties, you know, pop up uh, where um, it's, you know, only for one or two nights. There's artwork uh, on the walls. Um, the artwork is typically for sale, and it may also include uh, other types of art, you know, other types of artistic expression um, as part of the evening as well. Do you get a lot of participation from non-artists in the community coming in? Yes, and that was the thing that was very uh, surprising. You know, I was not always um, tracking really who, who who was coming in, and then I, um, you know, I I began to set up registration in a way that allowed me to distinguish uh, between visual artists, performers, other art forms, and those who considered themselves art lovers. And I was really surprised to find that it was a fifty fifty audience. And I was like, oh, well, that's wow. really wonderful. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So you think of all the people that have come in there that maybe not would never have gone into a gallery, you know, in a, a, a <laughs> normal gallery and, you know, that have been exposed to all the art, you know, that's great. And that's been some of the most, um, you know, rewarding uh, feedback, you know, that we've gotten. We really, we really um, have created a, a community and, um, you know, people are really, both the artists and, and art lovers, they're, they're really grateful. And I, you know, I'm always thinking, yeah, we're really grateful. You know, we're really grateful <laughs> that, you're, that you're here, that you trust us, you know, with your work, and you trust us with, um, you know, sharing your expression. And they're, they're, I remember one evening, um, a couple of... Um, a woman came in, they were probably early 20s. And as they were leaving that evening, they said, thank you so much for opening your doors and allowing just anybody to come in. Because um, if we were not here tonight, we probably would have been elsewhere. And they said this, up to no good. 
but this has been a really a really wonderful experience and that was just very you know that was that was really heartwarming very very heartwarming and yeah you know, it's nice to know you're making a difference <laughs> yeah 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 yep. it is do you have do you have any any other events coming up here you want to talk about uh you said something about what you got a free guide and Kind of yeah, thing. yeah. So, so one of the things, um, uh, the underpinning for Hang Night is, you know, it's important for artists to be seen and to be heard, and you can't sell your work unless you're showing your work. And so, I have a, a guide, a free guide that I'm putting the final touches on it, and it's um, show your art, sell your art, and uh, and it's really um, a list of at least 65 places where artists can show their work. And I don't mean specific places as in, um, uh, you know, this particular gallery or not. But the whole idea is that often artists think of galleries as the only place to show their work. And so this begins to list other places um, to just uh, stir up the imagination. And uh, uh, yeah, that's, that's available. You have it. Yeah. And then um, in uh, April, middle of April, April 18th, I'm going to be doing my, oh, I'm announcing both of these things for the first time here. But I'm <laughs> going to be doing an artist development workshop that is uh, really for um, early stage artists to give them insight, you know, an overview of the art community and to help them begin to think about um how they want to position themselves, what success looks like for them, and to to begin to to map that out, to map out possible pathways to see their career goals. Okay, and yeah. that will be on the 18th. An email address so people can uh, receive this information. Sure, and this is going to be a longie, but it's Sandra at sandraalexisheath.com. And that's Heath like the candy bar. Okay, one more time. Sandra, S A U N D R A, uh, Sandra at Sandra Alexis Heath.com. All right. Now, whenever I produce this, uh, this episode of the podcast, I always put it on our uh, website, um, our information website, talkartpodcast.com. I'll put all the links in this information for our listeners. Great. Our listeners can, uh, you know, can contact you if they're interested and, uh, you know, check these things out. That'd be wonderful. Thank you so much, Sandra, for joining us. And um, you got anything else, uh, Constance or uh, or Diane? You wanna you wanna ask Sandra here before we wrap things up because it's about the time. This time went by fast. Yeah. It really did. Wow. <laughs> I know we said we had started a conversation when we were in New York when we met and <laughs> it'd be nice to finish that conversation sometime, but I know we don't have enough time here tonight, but we had talked about creativity and, and uh, being an artist and it was, it, yeah. Hey, we, can, we can go a little longer, you know? Well, we had talked, we kind of talked about that at the beginning too, like just trying to go through all the things of learning to be an artist and you know, trial and error and trying different things. And everybody has that creative gene in them that absolutely you know, yep. a lot of people absolutely. don't use it or don't, they put it, you know, they get rid of it when they're, when they grow up and <laughs> they stick it somewhere and never to be seen again. But Yeah. And I think the thing that I, that I was most struck by in, in our conversation, it seems uh, crazy, but, you know, I thought that, um, to be a really good artist that even though I know artists continue to, you know, educate themselves and take training and, you know, that kind of thing, that you really had to, that you really had to start out with a certain level of artistic skill. And um, it was great in the conversation with you to know that, no, you really can move from, from uh, zero to, you know, a level of expression that you're really proud of, proud enough to show. And I always thought that there was an artistic gene that allowed you to, you know, go from um, good to better to better. And I, I really had no idea that you could progress from stick figures, you know, which is Absolutely. you know where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> well, whenever you 2007, that struck a chord with me because uh, I've been a, a, a visual artist my whole life. 
And yeah. when I was in high school, boy, I was all set. I was going to be a professional artist. <laughs> And then life got in the way. I joined the military and then I went overseas and then I got married and I have children. And it's my children that brought me back to, uh, to art because, uh, my, uh, my two uh, daughters, I have a yeah, daughter that's, uh, going on, uh, uh, 38 and another one that's, uh, 37 and they are both living in Italy and it's a long story wow. why, but, <laughs> but then there was a, a period of, uh, of separation there. And so I missed a good deal of their, uh, their, their youth or their teen years. I mean, yeah. bond when they were little. And one thing that they remembered was that I used to draw their cartoon character, favorite cartoon characters. Oh, I mean, no. cartoon things. So back in 2016, 2015, we started the, uh, we had been communicating via the phone, but not as often as when the video, when Facebook video, you know, came about. So we started right. and that is video is so great because you pick up on body language. <sighs> it's not just verbal communication, you know, and, yeah. and really it, it drew us together and um, they started asking me about my art. And I said, wow. girls, I haven't drawn anything physically for 26 years since I was over there. No, no, you should. You were so good. So here's these beautiful wow. women, you know, encourage me. So in 2017, I started doing it. And, oh, wow. And I found out about the Paul Klein course, and I took that. And I met Diane. I met Constance. And I launched my professional career. But that's I, beautiful. In 2017, that hit me. It struck a chord with me because that's when I, I didn't start out as an artist. Then I remember the first course of Paul, and he and I said, "Well, as a beginning artist," and he says, "Fine. How long have you been drawing? You are an emerging artist." And then I, yeah. had to, I had to learn the language, you know, the, the even be able to talk about my art. And but 2017 for me also was was a a a banner year, a launching year, you know, and that's I. Yeah, you know, and that beautiful story. Regards, it comes to the well. Thank you, and it comes to the fact that regards how old you are, you can still start a career. A, yeah. as, as an artist, it's just a matter of dedication and persistence, which is something that we talk about in our podcast all along, right? <laughs> you know, you can't you can't see it, I don't think, but I'm wearing a, a t shirt uh, that says "Create Your Life." Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that and this and this t shirt was created by a graphic artist who I met in a in a leadership uh, course and he said that he was interested in, you know, doing fine art and I challenged him to come to Hay Night. And he took me up on the challenge and he has been just you know, just just soaring, you know, just really, really soaring. But again, that's, that points to it's never too late to start. And often, you know, what's just needed is um, some encouragement. And, you know, I love that your daughters were catalysts for getting you to pick up the brush again. That's fantastic. Any last uh, comments or tips? I have, yeah, I have one little announcement. Um, I have been, I had applied to be in Mayfest in Tulsa, and I will be in Mayfest at Tulsa. I was accepted. So I got the letter this weekend. So congratulations! Uh, thank you. Times, yeah, yeah. So it's going to be on May eighth, ninth, and tenth. No, oh, that's wonderful. All right, Diane, you got got any, anything coming up here or? Uh, no. <laughs> How's that? Huh? Your Facebook page, your special page that you created. Uh, we talked about that last week. Yeah, mm -hmm. you announced it. So, are you are you getting? Yeah, I'm still working on that, but. Yeah, you know, it's it's a slow process getting it going, and you know, it's just, I just keep plugging away at it. But. And here's an idea that uh, Sandra, I'm glad that I get a chance to out because I've been involved with this organization, folks called the Art Box Project. They're out of Switzerland, and what okay. because of them, I've had I've participated in three exhibitions, international exhibitions. Now, the thing about me, uh, living on a very, very limited income, 
even if I get accepted into an exhibition, I don't have the money to send the physical art there. I've had to turn mm-hmm. down some, you know, some because I've, so what these folks do, they have a traditional gallery, but where they have, they, uh, put up traditional works of art, you know, the paintings and sculptures, but they also have these, uh, 85 inch flat screen monitors and they invite artists to send a high quality digital image and they exhibit it in on those monitors in like a slideshow fashion. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah that's a great idea. So they have just a little bit gallery in Switzerland. Yeah. People have a larger organization behind them and they're they're nonprofit funded by the Swiss government. So they that allows them to go around the world. Like I participated in the exhibit. They were during Art Basel in Miami. Oh, wow. And I never would have been able, you know, so that's how my art was there. It's on that monitor there. Oh, that's uh, fantastic. I was in there, I was in there the first time I was in their gallery, when I, mean, I first became aware of them, was uh, in October. I was uh, in Switzerland the entire month. Right yes. now, my images is, is, is in the entire month of March and April is in Switzerland. It's on that monitor. And that's then, fantastic through the 22nd of uh, March, I'll be in the Barcelona in an exhibition that they're, they're having in Barcelona. Now, what made me excited when I found you were in a, 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 a gallery owner, if you folks could figure out a way to get a monitor like that, yeah. set up in your gallery, you could literally open up to artists from around the world. Is yeah, that- yeah, you know. It just takes a little bit of software to create the slideshow so that they mm-hmm. come up for like 30 seconds, 40 seconds. So when you do your hang night, you see what I'm saying? Yes, I do. That's a great idea. You know, that's really, even that's for really local great. artists, I mean, yeah, even for local artists, if you, you only have so much wall space. So that would, you know, make your wall space a lot bigger. <laughs> No, that's not, that's actually a great idea because that whole idea of shipping art, you know, we've, you know, my husband has had that challenge too, and it's like, it's expensive. It can be, you know, even here in the states, it's it's expensive. You have to, you, have to, uh, you know, get get your art in the galleries. It's just a point of fact for folks. Yeah. You know, it's for collectors, you know, and everything. And the nice thing, these folks do, they they do exactly kind of like what you do. Uh, they don't. Mm-hmm. Uh, they don't accept any commissions. You, yep. you, mm-hmm. else, then you know they they put you in contact with the seller and you know let you work out the deal. And yeah. when they have their their international exhibits throughout the different places, they do charge a small fee for that. But it's yeah. it's you know all galleries charge some kind of a participation fee. You know that it has to cover pay for lights and electricity. And mm-hmm. water. So mm-hmm. it's feasible. But the thing about it is the whole deal is. They are they promote emerging artists, and yeah. because of them, I can say that I am I've been internationally exhibited. You know, which is wonderful. <laughs> Those are my, my resume. You know, and I, <laughs> do they have an online presence as well? Yes, I'll send I'll send you the uh, uh, the link the, to the information page so you can Fantastic. see what you know see what they were like what impressed me was in in uh during art basel uh, miami they were they were in a small gallery just down the street from the main right. art basel so you know you, uh where people have to walk by you know and yeah. the thing about it is they they posted pictures on their facebook page of there was crowds of people standing and they had footstools where people can sit in front of those monitors and just sitting there drinking their wine and what i was like Oh my God, that is just wonderful, you know. I, I love it. <laughs> I love it. It's a and you know, sure, my image may only pop up for like thirty or forty seconds, but then then another artist pops up. But then you know they and what they they as a courtesy to the artists, they they do if you participate in their exhibits, they uh, they do send you a certificate of participation, and they also mm-hmm. send you photographs of your art, how it's displayed on a monitor, you know, and everything. Yeah, yeah. The only catch is artists have to understand they have to submit a high resolution. They give the specifications, you know, what is determined. Uh, a high res- resolution image so that your art looks good you know, on the mind. Right. My stuff looks good. It looks. <laughs> <I> mean, oh. 
And that's wonderful because just like you said, you, you hit it right on the head. Now you're an international exhibiting artist and you exhibited at Basel. So, hey, you know. Those I, yeah, Marcus. And believe me, in 2017, if somebody had told me, I said, no, it's not going to happen. <laughs> no, it, it, it did. Wow. Small gallery. Wow. What you're doing is right in line. So you and your husband, if you can come up with the money to buy yourself a monitor, you might want to consider that, you know? It's yeah, no, I, I really I really am because um, what that does also is that it allows us to show more artists even outside of that night, you know? Uh -huh. So even, you know, whatever, you know, whatever we have going on, I have to just kind of look at our space and see how that can be configured. But um, I, I think it's a great idea. In contact with me because if you do that, hey, I'll, I'll certainly <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sure thing. I think that's about it for this episode of the Artist Friends Podcast. This was episode 37 for March the 9th, 2020. And this is Clyde J. Gale. And you've been listening to our guest artist, Sandra Heath. And then we've had our artist friends, Diane and Constance. And uh, let's go around. Let's, let's, let's go around. Uh, we sound like the old uh, uh, what is it the Waltons TV the Waltons <laughs> the Walton. good night Diane good night Clive good night Constance good night Sandra <laughs> Constance good night Clive good night Sandra good night Diane and good night everybody else <laughs> good night Sandra good night good night Clive good night Diane, good night, Constance. Thanks again so much for having me here. <laughs> we enjoyed it. Bye, bye. Thanks so much for listening. <laughs>